There's a couple of th Hello. So glad that you joined us online. Um, there's a couple of things that uh, I didn't get to, and, uh, and uh, Oscar actually said, well, all, I mean, all I saw was a bunch of people on a cruise ship. You know, they had wheelchairs in their luggage, and then all of a sudden these guys are coming out of the sky. I mean, how did that happen? And I want to explain this, too. Um, here you have the six boats. You have the three cargo ships, and you have the three passenger ships. This is a terrorist organization, IHH. Several countries have deemed it that, including this country, said you cannot put the boats here. You cannot dock at Cyprus because this is a terrorist organization. This is free Gaza. The American supporters include Code Pink. She was a fundraiser or a bundler for Barack Obama. Uh, William Ayers, a guy who on September 11th in the New York Times said, you know what, we didn't bomb enough. I don't regret anything we did. And the co-founder of the Weather Underground, also a, a unrepentant terrorist uh, from the unrepentant terrorist organization of, uh, of uh, the Weather Underground. These people are involved with Free Gaza. Okay? She has said she wants a revolution in America. That's fantastic. So, all of a sudden, forget about the terrorist past. Forget about Code Pink. Forget about the revolution thing. Forget about his bombings. Forget about it. Think of him with wheelchairs. Think of her with candy for children. And Code Pink, of course, with anything but a gun. Free Gaza. They provide half of the ships. IHH provides the other half of the ship. Okay? Three ships from each organization. Now they get into the water. Well, now, if you have aid, why not just bring it through Israel or through Egypt? Why do you have to bring it on the water? And why are you docking at Gaza? Why is the Gaza Strip fenced in? Because there's so many rockets being launched over into Israel that it's, it's, a, it's a, a haven for Hamas and terrorist organizations. So much so that the violence is spilling out of the Gaza Strip and into Egypt. Egypt doesn't want anything coming out of that uh, quarter either. It's not just Israel, it's Israel and Egypt. So, these great humanitarian organizations say, here's what we're going to do. We'll just load them on ships and we'll bring them right in directly to Gaza. Egypt says, no, no, no you're not, no you're not. You can, you can dock it here. You come over here right next to Gaza, we'll take the crates off and open up, and they're all wheelchairs, great, you can bring them on into Gaza. But we need to look. Why? Because it's a Hamas nightmare. It's a hornet's nest. Imagine, imagine if we were, let's use New York. New York. Imagine if you said, uh, you know, the village is fenced off. But it was fenced off because it, it, was, it was blowing things up in our city. Everything out of Greenwich Village, they were shooting rockets out. And they were claiming that we didn't have a right to be in New York. Okay? Imagine that. And two organizations that supported terrorists said, we're going to fill ships and we're going to dock them. We're going to float them down the river and dock them right here, right at the village. So the village, they can just, the, the village people... This is strangely, this is, why, this is why we plan these things out usually in advance, so we don't have the village people coming over and unloading terrorist ships. But would we do it? Or would the Coast Guard say, no, 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 you're not talking there. You can dock a couple of blocks up. You can block a couple of blocks down. Especially if the Red Cross had access. You can just feed it through the Red Cross. You'd be suspicious. We would never let it happen. Now, when Egypt says you dock here, they said, no, we're not going to. Israel offered a dock over here, said, you dock here, we'll do the same thing. No, we're coming in. Why? I contend because the peace activists know propaganda. This is from Germany. The Jew, the inciter of war. What is the media saying? What is the media saying? They're inciting war. You know and I know, if it was the United States, we would also board these ships 
You'd have a right to board the ship, especially if you were surrounded by people who wanted to destroy you. That's why they boarded the ship. But they knew, they knew what these people do. They're peace activists. That's all they are. They, Code Pink, they just love the troops. That's all they do. They just love the troops. They're just for peace. Sure. Sure. And, and he's, he's just for social justice. And if I have to bomb to do it, I will. Is she just for revolution in America? And, you know, whatever it takes, we'll, we'll do. But they're all peace lovers. How do they always do it? What is SCIU doing? SCIU, they know they have the media in their pocket. SCIU sends people to beat people down. Like, do you have the, Gla the Gladney video? No? We've lost control of the control room. Everybody's like, I'm on lunch hour. Um, the Gladney video, remember the guy that we showed you, SCIU, was beaten down by SCIU members? You didn't see that anywhere. And it was me. They still said, we have the video on tape of them beating a black man, calling him the N-word, and still somehow or another, the Tea Party members were the problem. They know they have control of the press. They know how to spin it. It's what they do. So they, they were waiting, waiting for the IDF to come. And I, quite frankly, I think they were disappointed that the IDF didn't come in with guns a-blazing. They came with paint guns. They were disappointed. But they don't care. The facts don't matter in America anymore. The facts don't matter to the rest of the world. There's a reason this is going on, and I don't know exactly what it is, but I have a feeling it's something to do with the, the new world order, the new uh, global governance. Not to be confused with government. The new global governance and settling some old scores because we are on the eve of profound global change. You just have to ask, whose story do you believe? What feels like the truth? When I was a kid, um, Israel was like us. Um, I don't agree with everything that Israel does. I'm not saying that we should go over there with guns a-blazing and support Israel and everything. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, let's stand up for the truth. Let's stand up for the truth. And how did we go from Israel being one of our staunchest allies and one of the only allies in the Middle East, how did we go from that in 18 months to they're an enemy of ours? Did you have a discussion on that? Because I didn't have a discussion on that. I, I haven't heard that. I haven't seen that slow transition. All of a sudden, they're an enemy. And there is no jihadist. There, there are no Muslim extremists. There is no such thing as terror. This is from the DOJ. And the usual suspects are involved again. I mean, you're going to have to decide, America. You're going to have to decide. Because the story of America is being written today. We are living history. You can't be an armchair guy. You've got you to decide. Because it's the future, not only of the country, it's the future of the world being decided right now. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow.